Section 2, Mobile UX Design Trends. Before we get into the design process in more detail in later sections, let's look at what are some of the hottest trends in mobile UX design in 2014 and 15. There are a number of trends we're seeing that use varying approaches to architecture and experience. One of these trends is device agnostic designs. The makers of iOS and of Android provide different default controls and convention recommendations for interfaces to be used on their devices. This helps to create standards and user expectations for a specific device. The standards for iOS apps and for Android apps are different. Device agnostic designs consider broader mobile standards and don't follow all these device specific recommendations. A couple reasons for this trend. One is that many organizations decide to create apps for various different devices and would like all of them to be consistent or would like to save by using the same design. Another reason has to do with the app's objectives. If these objectives are not easily achieved through use of the defaults and recommended conventions, thinking outside the box is in order. As use of mobile devices continues to increase and become the norm, UX practices are evolving to address more directly the needs and wants in human computer interaction with small touch driven devices. Developing a device agnostic design can be more time consuming and therefore more expensive, but it can often create a stronger experience and therefore ultimately be more profitable. Such designs still draw on user expectations across devices and rely on design principles and usability considerations. Yahoo Weather, Yahoo News Digest, and Facebook Paper, which we looked at in section one, all have device agnostic designs, which use broader mobile standards and not device specific standards. My Fitness DJ Pro, on the other hand, uses default Apple iOS controls and flows. It may be somewhat functional, but it doesn't provide a superior user experience for the objectives at hand. Design patterns. Common solutions to strong experiences become best practices and in turn become known as design patterns. These patterns can be for navigation, tutorials, forms, flow types like for social sharing, and any other actions that are often required in different applications. There are also what's referred to as anti-patterns. Anti-patterns are essentially bad solutions that create less than ideal experiences but have become common. It's important to remember that just because a practice has become common doesn't mean it's the best solution. It's important to keep a critical eye when making design choices to determine what's the strongest solution for a particular project. Discerning and deciding when to use convention and when to be inventive is a big part of UI UX design. Facebook Paper is an example of a decision to propose a new way for users to interact and experience their Facebook content. It does draw upon some design patterns, but it also pushes the envelope with new approaches to interactions that may very well influence design patterns that emerge in the coming years. Responsive design and also similarly adaptive design. We are seeing more and more websites designed to cater to the mobile context. Responsive design establishes modifications between screen sizes, adapting the controls and flow to cater to use in different contexts. A good example of this is Site Mashable. This can be far more cost effective than developing device specific apps, but the choice doesn't accommodate all business goals. So for some, responsive design is not a viable option. Use of the hamburger icon side menu, which we saw in Yahoo Weather and Yahoo News Digest, is a common practice in responsive design. And it's also showing up more and more in native applications as well. A note, the same sort of code that can be used for a responsive website's interface can also be used for mobile apps by using what's called a wrapper like PhoneGap Build. This is one possible approach to developing a device agnostic design. However, there can be performance issues resulting from developing with use of a wrapper rather than as native. I'll revisit mobile development considerations later in the course.